So ladies and gentlemen, today we are looking at the top 10 best pack-a-punched weapons in Modern Warfare Zombies. I have gone through the ringer, trying out a bunch of different builds, and coming up with 10 weapons that will absolutely shred when you're playing zombies. Now these are not going to be including wonder weapons, as I feel like that's unfair to put them on the list. Maybe I'll do something else for pack-a-punched uh, wonder weapons, but for now this is going to be weapons that you can apply in your insured slot that you can bring into the match or otherwise ones to look out for during the course of the game. But I'm going to show you some builds and attachments that are going to be absolutely broken now the good thing is a lot of these weapons cover a variety of situations and have different strengths and weaknesses so you can really pick and choose which ones that best suit your play style the way that you know you like to interact with the game and all that stuff now what's really weird about modern warfare zombies is that it has almost the complete opposite weapon balance of cold war zombies so a lot of you who have maybe watched my content from years prior this is going to be very different than what we had in cold war so stick with me and you're going to have some amazing builds to use in zombies. It's worth mentioning that to unlock the full potential of a few of these guns, you're going to need to level them up. And it's ideal that you bring in something like ether tools and refined Ethereum crystals into the game to actually pack a punch them and make them better. If any of these help you, just drop a like. That would be amazing. And subscribe to the channel. It's completely free. I would really appreciate it. And let's get started. So starting off coming in at our number 10 spot is going to be a bit more of a simple and very effective build. This is the Holger 556 Assault assault rifle this weapon can be found pretty easily in game even if you don't bring it in uh, with your loadout slot this can usually be found somewhere in the tier 3 zone on a wall buy so you can immediately grab it and upgrade it if you like however if you want to use you know legendary ether tools or something else to upgrade it in game then I'm going to give you a build that makes this incredibly effective I feel the main things with the Holger is that it's incredibly consistent damage and to make this even better this attachment setup allows you to stay very mobile you can move quite quickly the hip fire is excellent you don't always need to be aimed down sights with this you can also you know use it in tax stance as well it's incredibly effective there too i feel like this is just one of those like you know jack of all trades master of none kind of assault rifles i can't say it's incredibly great at anything in particular but it does feel as if it deals much more consistent damage than many of the other assault rifles in its class and again with these attachments in particular you keep that consistent damage but you also really you know turn up your your stats in terms of being able to move quickly you can aim down sights quickly the ads speed and the way that you can walk is very important in this game because you know movement is almost everything in terms of staying alive a uh, very consistent weapon and i think you should definitely give it a try moving on to our number nine spot is another assault rifle that i feel is a bit of an alternative to the holger if you don't want to use that one but this is the mcw not only is it a monster in multiplayer but it's also pretty damn good here too now the thing is with the attachments it gets pretty interesting because there is a conversion kit that makes this shoot a little bit faster although I've used both and I don't really see a giant difference practically speaking in game between these two so you can use the conversion kit if you want but you absolutely don't have to either way I do feel the MCW you know emulates the strengths of the Holger in a lot of ways where it's just very consistent damage and there really isn't any situations that it's weak at great for crowd control it doesn't necessarily melt bosses or elites but when you know when scaling it up with ether tools and even pack a punch it still deals great damage, it's a very fast and nimble weapon, and the magazine size is surprisingly big for the movement speed that it still grants you. I think the MCW is incredibly slept on, and I think it's one of the most consistent ARs in the game, and is very, very good in zombies. Taking our number 8 spot, we have a bit more of a specialized rifle. This is going to be the DG-58, and this gun is absolutely insane. Uh, I do feel this has all of the strengths of the previous weapons, the, you know, Holger and MCW, not to mention they're also fantastic at dealing with mercs and this gun is no exception in fact at least in my experience i really feel the dg58 may be the best at dealing with mercs possibly on this list but regardless i do feel it has all of the strengths of the prior weapons plus some extra stuff now admittedly it is a little bit more specialized it's a three round burst weapon and that can definitely change the feel and the way that you need to approach situations it is far better at crowd control in my opinion than the previous two guns and it's also very solid at dealing with elites now the challenge challenge I had with this gun was building it in a way that still remained it to be mobile and snappy and that was kind of tricky because a lot of the attachments that are theoretically good for other stuff maybe damage or precision made the gun feel really cumbersome and slow so that was a bit of a challenge for me to get this right but I feel this is the most optimal build at the moment the extended magazine doesn't hurt your mobility too much and I think the benefits far outweigh the disadvantages you may encounter I think the DG58 is absolutely excellent and I also would say that 
that the best comparison is probably like the M16 in Cold War Zombies, if you remember that. The guns feel very similar, and I think they're just as effective as one another. Big fan of the DG-58, and it does have an LMG form, which I think is very solid as well, but I think I prefer the AR still. Coming in at our number seven spot is a quite interesting build, and these are going to be the WSP Stingers. Technically, these are classified as a handgun, but I don't feel that really properly conveys how good these actually are. This weapon is insane, and I think with the proper build, you can deal insane absurd damage that shouldn't even be legal. The thing is, it's very good at crowd control. That's probably its greatest strength. So if you're doing contracts like the, the ACV, you know, escorting things, or even doing Doing holdouts I feel this is probably one of the best guns you can use for it now the attachments on this the ones that are important in my opinion are the laser and in particularly you need a Kimbo you can run this as its own weapon of course you can just fire one if you want to I suppose however you're gonna be dealing half the damage that you theoretically could be if you had a Kimbo and the added accuracy you're gonna get just using one weapon does not outweigh the benefit of having two with just far more damage and the lasers I think really take care of the accuracy problem if you're fighting anything outside of like 50 to 70 meters anyways then these guns are not going to be the one for you you need to get closer but uh, I think it's really effective at just about anything in the game it's just not good at long range is its only problem it's even not so great at medium range but anything up close it's surprisingly good at dealing with mercs too I noticed and I don't think you can really go wrong with this build but you do need to level it up to get a Kimbo but I think once you have all of this good to go the WSP stinger is probably one of the best builds you can use moving on up to number six we have yet another akimbo build and interestingly, this is going to be the Akimbo Renettis, which I did not expect to be as good as they are. I would say that this gun feels very much like the B23R does in Black Ops 2, but you can dual wield this, and again, when pack punched and when upgraded, it becomes an absolute machine. It's even pretty good unupgraded, which really surprised me. And, uh, you know, most of the handguns are pretty solid in this game, but I think the Renettis are a cut above than most, and I think you cannot go wrong with this build. Now, the only thing that I feel like is really up to you is what you choose to do for the magazine size. I feel, you know, having the, like, giant magazine on this not only looks a little silly, but it even slowed down my movement to where I felt like, you know, having a handgun, I shouldn't be moving this slow. So I opted for a slightly smaller magazine in exchange for a bit more movement, but I feel this is the optimal build for, for this. This particular weapon but I actually think the Renettis will surprise you they do illegal things to elites and I think uh, you're gonna be quite impressed with these and they're also surprisingly effective at crowd control and I think its only drawback is it's really not so good at medium to long range at all it's worth carrying something else alongside these if you're gonna be doing anything that's like again combat outside of 50 meters but up close it absolutely shreds and it is a machine all right up next at our number five spot is the uh Yulimo, I chat. I'm gonna be honest. I don't know how to pronounce this this way. I don't know how the hell to say this. But anyways, it's the it's the LMG the the P1. You know what I'm saying. So this gun is crazy. Uh, I would say it's almost the opposite of the Renetti's. And in this particular build, I feel this is the optimal way to run it because it's not like an insane shred machine up close, but it is really effective at medium to long range. If you're looking for that good counterbalance gun to something like that, I feel this is the one. It doesn't have the fastest fire rate in the world but the reason I choose this LMG over a lot of the other options is because its reload time is really surprisingly solid a lot of the LMGs I just could not bear the reload time and being able to fire and have ammo quite quickly is very important in modern warfare zombies so I felt this was the greatest cross between having an insane damage output incredibly consistent ammo and all around just a, a very effective weapon and also the laser I'm running on it means that you can't aim down sights and and I think that's fine for this gun. You don't need to be fully ADS to be effective with it. And this laser allows you to hip fire or just basically do this like canted tack stance and still be just as effective as anything else. I think it's surprisingly slept on and I would give this one a try. I'm still playing around with my favorite LMG builds and maybe this one will change in the future. But for now, I think this is a, a solid one that you can play with. Coming in at number four is going to be the PDW from Modern Warfare 2 or, you know, that game's P90 essentially. And
and this one I, I think shocked me it came out of nowhere and I believe this is our first Modern Warfare 2 gun on this list however I feel this has a couple of special properties when pack a punch that a lot of the other guns do not now the thing is right up front it doesn't have the craziest like TTK or damage output compared to some of the other weapons on this list but that's okay because if you value some of these other things that the PDW does have then it might be a good choice it the thing is it has just as much ammunition as our previous LMG did when pack a punched you can't do much to the you know p90 to upgrade its ammunition inside of the you know gunsmith or you can't like change its magazine but right when you pack a punch it just by default it's going to have 400 rounds and with speed cola and everything else the reload time means that you'll pretty much never not have ammo you will always have bullets in the magazine uh, you'll pretty much never be you know downtime for reload making it extremely good at crowd control not to mention it has some of the best movement speed of any weapon in the game period it's one of the most agile and moldable weapons for any situation just the fact that you never have to reload and you can pretty much just hip fire this the whole time uh it's very reactive it's very fast and if you want you know like a very quick aggressive weapon i think you can't really get much better than this p90 so definitely give this one a try and i think it will surprise you so coming in at our number three spot is a very special weapon. This is the F-TAC Siege, which again is another MW2 weapon, technically classified as a handgun, but the way you build this, it plays a lot more like an effective SMG. Now, the thing is, I feel its direct comparison is like the Tech 9 from Cold War. If you remember that weapon, probably one of the most effective guns in zombies, hands down. It was great for crowd control, boss fights, you name it. It was good at like almost everything. And I feel this is the same situation. It doesn't have nearly the same uh, magazine capacity as the P90, but it doesn't really need to. It is an absolute bullet hose with an insane DPS, especially, you know, when upgraded and, a, you know, very high rarity. You can mostly get away with just hip firing or even tax stancing this gun as the iron sights are not the prettiest or even the most steady thing in the world. But the, you know, recoil aside, I think the damage is far worth it dealing with a bit of more of a wild weapon. I think the F-Tax Siege is probably like my go-to SMG in the game. I know it's technically a handgun but still you get the point it plays like that and it's very reminiscent of the tech 9 which is what i really had a soft spot for that in cold war and it feels very similar here coming up to our number two spot is going to be the wsp swarm this is very similar to the stinger which we talked about earlier i would say this is more accurately looked at as the stinger's bigger brother the swarms are a lot better because i feel you know while you do need the conversion kit to run akimbo i think it's more than worth it because its damage is better the magazine can capacity is more solid. I think the only downside that these don't have compared to the Stingers is movement speed, but even then it's a little bit negligible. Uh, I think the damage you get is, again, far more worth it and severely weighs the drawbacks that you would have. I absolutely love this setup, and there isn't a single thing I feel like it's weak at. It's great for boss fights, good for elite encounters, crowd control, you name it. It's even very effective in the Tier 3 zone when fully upgraded to Legendary and Pack-a-Punch Tier 3. You will absolutely shred zombies, and I I think that there really isn't anything it can't handle. One of the most effective weapons, period, and I do feel this kind of akimbo strategy where you're just dumping out bullets does seem to be the meta at the moment in Modern Warfare Zombies, and unless any changes are made, this is probably the best overall effective crowd control weapon. I don't think it's the number one spot in terms of damage, which we'll get to in a second, but I would say just for general purposes, this is probably going to be the best gun in the game hands down. However, if you're just looking for sheer damage output, then we have something else for you. But finally, coming in at our number one spot are going to be the tier pistols, or basically what is the Destiny hand cannon. This gun is crazy. Now, when you first start using it, it may seem like actual low tier garbage. Uh, it's not going to be effective at all. It's incredibly slow. There's like a trigger delay. It's annoying, but trust me, when you level it up and then you unlock a few things in particular, it completely changes the meta of this weapon. In particular, you're gonna want a Kimbo, of course, because it makes this, you know, much more effective you're dealing essentially double damage but the most important part of this build is you're going to want to use the snake shot rounds these change the projectile from being a single bullet to more of a shotgun effect and this completely changes the way that it plays and so i feel this weapon is overwhelmingly the best at dealing insane damage to a single target i mean look at the worm boss fight and look how unbelievable these are i i actually was mind blown to see how good these were you know against this particular 
particular boss fight. It is great against elites and special enemies. You can literally one tap them, do illegal things to them. Like it's it's unreal. Uh, I feel these guns may end up catching a nerf at some point, but I will say I do think it evens out because admittedly this gun is not so good at crowd control and anything with like massive amounts of enemies, it's not the best at because you only have five per you know magazine and that's not great at dealing with a ton of enemies at once. So it's good pairing with the sidearm. The laser you have makes the hip fire much more accurate and the barrel extends your damage range, which is also important because you need all of the range you can manage out of this. But overall, I would say that these are the most broken weapons in the game right now. And I think this one is certainly a cut above the rest. So I hope these did help. Let me know if there's any weapons that you feel like I slept on. I may make an updated list in the future. The meta may change. But for right now, these are the top 10 best pack-a-punch guns in Modern Warfare Zombies. I hope you guys enjoyed. Make sure to leave a like, subscribe, and I'll see you all soon. Thank you all for watching and peace out.